This was a talk that came about because I saw someone else give a cool talk and I thought, yes, let's have a look at that. And then I did this project with my friend. So this is one of my most fun projects. So that's why I'm going to share it with you today. So this is, it's got like a really long, dull title, but it's cool. Don't worry. It's okay. Um, so it's about structural color, which is color that is not caused by pigment, but by something else. So like the, the shape of the surface, uh, these kind of things. Um, so you see this in peacocks, in butterflies, and obviously in plants, in this bit of flower. And it happens when you have, or like many ways, but one of them is if you have like little bumpy bits that are close to the wavelength of light, then the light sort of uh, creates this interference and it makes this iridescent like halo shiny kind of color, which is, it's pretty cool. Um, and so it's quite common in flowers because bees really like it. And so it's often that you see this like bullseye shape. You can see this purpley region that has this sort of shininess to them. And so it just helps the bees be attracted to the flowers. And so this is hibiscus, this flower with this purple bit in the middle. Um, and the way that it has this structural color is because it has these ridges in the cuticle. So the cuticle is the layer on the surface of the petal and has these teeny tiny little ridges which are like close to the wavelength of light. And the most important thing about how they work is that they're really like lined up. So you can see they form these like ordered stripes like this across the surface. And you can see that in other flowers, they also have them. And sometimes they're this way or the other way, but they're always like really organized in these ordered patterns because otherwise they just wouldn't work. You wouldn't get this nice iridescent halo so the question really that we were looking at is how do they get to be organized like this? How do they create this organized pattern? And there's different ways that you can make these kind of organized coordinated patterns. Um, these are like three options that they were considering. So one is a polarity field. So you can have like a lot of something here, not a lot of it over there. And then you can have like a gradient that goes across the front of the stage and things could like read out where they were and like line themselves up with that gradient to try and make these stripes. Something else you can imagine is that they grow and as they're growing, they deposit this kind of stuff that makes these stripes. Um, and the third and final option that we were considering is mechanical stress is causing it. And you might be like, yeah, what's that? So um, <laughs> mechanical stress is like uh, something like, so plants are, have turgor pressure, so they, they inflate and this pushes them against the cell wall, so it like stretches the cell wall. So this puts a stress on the cell wall. And the direction of that stress depends on the shape of the cell. But then, plants also have a shape. And so, in most cases, the shape of the cell is the main determinant of this stress. But sometimes you bend your plant into like a weird shape, and that just overrides that little stress that they had because of their pressure, because you've deformed them in such a big way. And at that point, you start to get like tissue level mechanical stresses across the tissue. And so I saw this talk and I thought, I can do that, I can test that, because what I do is build little tiny robots that I put under confocal microscopes, like the ones that you're using with Joe in the, in the cell practical. And so what we do is we attach the plant and then we pull on it a little, a little bit while we image it. And so we can see what happens to the plant while we pull on it. And we can apply different amounts of force. We can apply force in different directions, different amounts of time. And we can image what happens to the plant. And so we can say, does the mechanical stress do something to the cytoskeleton, um, to the genes? So what is it doing? And it turns out lots of things in plants respond to mechanical stress. Also in animals, by the way. Um, which kind of makes sense, because if you're a giant, water-filled, puffed-up, turgid thing, you really do want to make sure you're not going to explode. Um, also, you know, stuff like trees, if, they, if there's a lot of wind, they make like tension wood. Um, there's a ton of reasons that you want to be able to sense what's going on with your mechanical stress. Okay, so having this robot and seeing this talk, I thought, you know, Let's do something. And so we took a closer look at these flowers and they only make these ridges in the purple bit and only on the inside, adaxial, inside part. Um, 
on the back they don't make them and on the white part they don't make them and if you look at a really young bud this one here at that point all the cells look the same so they look the same regardless of whether they're going to make striations or not so that's like a good stage to test them because they haven't made them yet and so we cut off these little tiny petals and I just put them in my machine and I just pulled on them a little bit and usually when you do this you have to at least go and have lunch usually you have to go home and sleep and then come back because most of the things I look at it takes like 24 hours for it to do anything the quickest thing I'd ever seen was four hours so I put it on and I wasn't even like looking you know I was like chatting with my friend we were walking away and then she was like whoa and we looked and it like it had already done it so it had been there for like a minute and we had these stripes appear already and so we just had to put this little petal on this little machine pull on it a teeny tiny bit and it made this purple iridescent color from these little striations and so we were like yes this is cool right this doesn't normally happen i don't know maybe you maybe you have like a really uh different opinion of science but this rarely happens the first time we do an experiment um maybe my movie works let's see this is the real time event this is this little bit of petal it's getting stretched this way okay so it's starting to make some ridges but they look a bit funny a bit unconvincing the video is slightly too slow but it's still really fast for like real life so i'm gonna make you watch it um <laughs> <laughs> see it's going it's going they're getting more wrinkly It's going to be awkward. Uh, <laughs> you'll notice also the wrinkles are in the direction that we're pulling on it. Okay, so we're really like influencing the the direction of them, and all the cells have these like lined up wrinkles that are forming. So they're making this like coordinated pattern across all of these cells. You can see now it's getting like properly wrinkly. Okay, so it's not even long enough to have a T. There we go. See, now they're getting really tiny. You're seeing these teeny tiny little wrinkles. Oh, yeah, okay, maybe that's enough. Are you convinced? Do you want to see more? Okay. It's probably enough wrinkles. So it's pretty wrinkly at this point. And so this doesn't really answer all of our questions. It tells us that mechanical stress can cause these wrinkles but it doesn't tell us if there's also some kind of polarity field, right? Like it could still be using some other information to like know how to put them. And so what I did was I took it and then I turned it around and then I pulled it the other way. So this is the way they would make them if it was in the flower. So this is like the normal direction of the striations. And so if you imagine if you pulled it in the opposite direction, it might do it or it might not do it. Who thinks it does it? Who thinks it doesn't do it? Yeah, see, it's so cool to do experiments, because then you know. Okay. So, <laughs> so we did it, and it does it. So when you pull them the other way, then they make them in the other direction. And so this is cool, because this means like it's not pre-patterned. So it can, just, it can do it in any direction. And all that matters is the direction of that stress. That tells it which direction to make the striations. And it makes these beautiful, like, lined up, nice things and so we measured how big they were because people care about these kind of things and it was exactly the same as the ones that happened naturally so it wasn't just that we did something very strange and something happened um, but they really were the same as the ones that you see forming naturally which is quite exciting so then we took one of those white bits two minutes that's okay that's okay so then we took one of the white bits uh, and we looked at the back of the petal to see what they would do so, do you think the white bit would make this? Yes? No? Okay, and the back? Yes? No? All right. So no, only the parts that make it in the real plant made it when we pulled on it. Um, so this means that you've got this deposition of something that can buckle when you pull on it. Um, and so the part of the flower that can make it has to have this stuff put there 
and the other parts of the flower, they don't have the stuff, so they don't do it. And so we made a model, because we like that kind of thing, and we have a model of a film on a substrate, and so you have a stiff film, so that's like, kind of if you put like wax on your t-shirt. So when you stretch the petal, the petal like stretches, and it can shrink in the other direction, but the, the layer is stiffer, so it can't shrink, so it gets these little, little bumpy bits in it. And that's how you get these, these striations. So wherever you have these two layers with these different mechanical properties, you can get this buckling, you can get these stripes. And we're trying to test that now by poking at it a little bit with an AFM. Um, and you can see the little layers here. So the layers are very visible on the side that makes them and not on the, on the other side. So that means we are like pretty happy that mechanical stress is the cause of striations in flowers, um, or at least in this flower. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's the summary. And it's also something that happens in other things, like brains, pumpkins, and puppies. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, these are the people that help me. Thank you very much.